Steve Langford's here. Stevie Boy from the Howard 100 News Department. Uh, Steve? Uh, what do you got for us? Salads tossed aside as the fast food show hosted by John Hine and Jason Kaplan rejects a request from Lisa G. that she become the show's salad correspondent. Why would they have that? It has nothing to do with uh, fast, food. fast food. Lisa's suggesting on more than one occasion she cover the lettuce and tomato beat, but the boy's turning her down. Of course. You excited about that show tonight? Yeah, it's always fun. So just, you just talk about fast food? Yep. And what do you, what's the, what the, do you say? Yeah, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> didn't you cover it all in the first show? <laughs> this is our third one. Is but, it? Yeah. And what, what are you going to argue about tonight? What the best burger is. We're going to actually have the burgers there to try. We're going to do a taste test? Yes. So we'll be ta the best burgers, best fries. Do you think you can convince Jason? Like, I know you think the best burger is McDonald's, right? Well, of the major chains, yeah. Right. And you think Burger King is awful. Yes. But you, isn't that like a personal taste thing? Will you, will you taste a Burger King tonight? I have to. You will. And uh, how do you know you will hate it? Because you've had it enough times. I've had it before. So you're, Suppose you like it. Could you I, do it? Will you say you like it I will it be like objective it? enough to say that I like it if I actually like it, but I know that I won't. Now, could, you, he, could he do it blindfolded? Why don't you do a blindfold? We better. talked about that. That would be big. How that would translate over the radio, though. But no, look, uh, if but you're blindfolded and everyone explains that, and then you taste the burgers, and you can still taste whether it's a Burger choose, King. Yeah. Choose his favorite one of the bunch. Or you right. say which is the worst one, and it turns out not to be Burger King. Then one, you got to show. What are you do? I would be more than willing to do that. Well, Put I think you should order. do it. Put them in order. You know. You've never tried chicken noodle soup, right? Like, you're one of those finicky eaters. Correct. You should register at that Duke University thing. <laughs> Tonight, why don't you try chicken noodle soup for the first time in your life? Well, Burger King would be pushing it, but... Uh... Right. Right. <laughs> Why won't you wouldn't try it on the air and just see what happens? What chicken noodle soup? Yeah, how do you? What if you love it? What's that going to do to you? I mean, I, it's not really fast food, so it doesn't make sense for the show. I just show, I think it would be fun. You've I, never tried it in your life. You mean the side of it turns you off? Yeah. What? What? what chicken noodles? Noodles. It just does, Every soup, kid loves noodles. Soup in general just doesn't you appeal to me. You don't drink or eat soup. No. The only soups I've had are <laughs> New England clam chowder. Do you like that? Yeah, that's okay. Right. And uh, wonton soup at a Chinese place. <laughs> Will you eat stew? Because stew is kind of half soup. I've never had stew. You've How about gazpacho? Never had it. Never had it. Never had no. it. <laughs> oh, I'm insanely immature when it comes to eating. But would you try chicken noodle soup? Because it, it really is appealing looking. I mean, I, w I would try it. But and you've never had pasta? No, they got that wrong. I've had it, but I haven't had it in a very long time. You don't like it? No, it just doesn't do it for me. Will you eat chicken? Regular chicken? Yeah. Of course. Well, you eat noodles. Nah. But if it's in a soup, you will not eat them together. Yeah, it just doesn't appeal to me. Wow. That's mind-blowing. <laughs> That's mind-blowing to me. Yeah. That you would never try chicken noodle soup. I've had spaghetti and meatballs once in my life. Wow. And you didn't like it? No. You don't, don't eat pasta, right? Right. Oh, my I've God. I've never heard of this. I mean, everybody loves pasta. I've never met a person that doesn't eat it. You I, eat pizza? Yes. Huh. Ah. Love pizza. Just cheese. Tried pasta once and you knew for the rest of your life, I'm never trying it again. When I had spaghetti and meatballs, I was at this... It's a long story, which isn't going to be Was it like from a can it. or something? No, I... We were visiting Florida and my folks put us in some, like, weird daycare thing for the day. And so this, were you, like, raped during it? It felt like it. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, did someone sexually assault no, you? No, someone during? forced me to eat it. I said I didn't oh. want to eat it and she literally forced me to eat it. And I've never forgotten that. Wow. I think that has something to do with it. That sounds like you had a traumatic experience yes, with spaghetti. with spaghetti and meatballs, as stupid as that Would sounds. you eat spaghetti here if I gave you uh, the most delicious spaghetti ever? I would try it. You but would. But I you think you wouldn't like it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty close-minded when it comes to that kind of stuff. So fast food's really good for you in the sense that uh, that's something you're really open to. It's, fa it, it's horrible, horrible for me health-wise. Right. But, yeah, it's something that I've eaten for a long time. And on tonight's show, you will have McDonald's, yes. Burger King, what, Wendy's? Wendy's, White Castle, Five Guys, Steak and sh uh, excuse me, Shake Shack, and we don't know what uh, other people are going to bring to the... Table. Why don't they blindfold you and give you the burger from five of those places and let me see if you can pick out the Burger King? I bet you can't. Pick and you'll out know. the best one. I think I could. You do? I hope it's I the think Burger I could. King. <laughs> wow. Pick out the best and the worst. So you were somewhere where they forced you to eat spaghetti and meatballs. Yes. Like, what do you mean? They forced, like they put, pushed your face? I into said them? I didn't want it. She said, yes, you're going to eat it. I said, no, I'm not. She said, yes, you are, and made me eat. She held, stood there Held my you. neck and made me eat the spaghetti. Wow. How old were you? I must have been six, seven years wow. old. Who knew? 
I can't imagine not eating spaghetti. And do you, um, are you automatically open to trying new things that the fast food places put out? No. No? Like what? Like the Angus burger when they come out with that? No, stuff like McDonald's, I always get a double quarter pounder plain with no cheese. Really? Yeah. You know, I had pasta Saturday night. I had beautiful uh, spaghetti with crab meat in it. And then yesterday for lunch, beautiful pasta with uh, all garden vegetables on it. Oh, my God, it was so good. Oh. Do you eat rice? With Chinese food. Oh. Only, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No wonder you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the things I like are not the good yeah. things to like, that's for sure. All right, uh, what else you got there, uh, Steve? And George Takei asking this reporter, quote, why are we doing this interview about rectal itch? The now legendary Howard 100 News special about that very guilty pleasure coming up during dinner the other night, the news department then providing a copy of the 2006 special to Takei, who freely admits he too has rectal itch. He mm. does? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have rectal itch? Sure. I don't. Uh. Once I started using baby wipes and stuff, I don't have any itching. And I only use a very limited... I only poke back there. I don't even wipe that hard. By the way, are you careful with your baby wipes? Do you flush them? I only get the flushable kind. No, oh, okay. Chlorine-free, flushable, All very right. environmentally sound. Because that could be a problem. Well, I know. That could clog up your cesspool. Yeah. Yep. No. Everyone at my house knows uh, I use... Baby wipes in there. Very careful to buy me the kind that can be flushed. <laughs> so embarrassing. Like everyone knows my business because I'm I'm too much of an infant to buy my own things. Go to the store and get my own stuff. So now I basically everyone I'm an open book. Everybody has to know all of your embarrassing Everything. secrets. Yeah. I don't even buy my own rubbers. You know my my scumbags or whatever you call them <laughs> condoms. Laura does that for me. So every once in a while, I have to send her a note. I think I'm out of condoms. Can you please get me more? Like a child. Because I'm, like, I'm too uptight to go buy my own shit. Mm -hmm. And I want to get a new kind of condom that I read about in uh, Maxim Magazine. But I, I don't even want to write the memo saying to Laura, you know, hey, can we try these? And, you know, it's just embarrassing. And then, then I go, I'm out of baby wipes. Everybody knows I wipe my ass with baby wipes. It's embarrassing. Everything's embarrassing because I can't do anything for myself. I've created a lifestyle where I don't do anything. I just sit there and wait for everyone to do something for me. Even my psychiatrist said it was weird. So you start taking, you know, take charge of your life, you asshole. <clears throat> I go, yeah, but do I really want to go to the store and buy my own rubbers? Is the doctor pushing you to do things like that? Yeah. 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 Is that really necessary to your recovery? Yeah. <laughs> After my divorce, he made me get my own checkbook because um, my wife used to write all the checks. Right. And then I, be, then I got in charge. Well, that's I, understandable. But why can't somebody go to the store for you? I don't know. I don't know. He thinks it's infantile. I think it's great, except for the fact that i got to write a memo every once in a while and say I need more rubbers and... Baby wipes. I mean, it's almost still like going to the store. You have to ask someone for it. Yeah. I hate buying those baby wipes. But boy, I love them. Do you think, I, I mean, you have the embarrassment like people will know what you're doing with them? Yeah. They won't think you have a baby? Right. No, no one thinks I have a baby. <laughs> I'm thinking just getting a baby so I can disguise my baby wipes. That's the only reason I can see to have a kid. I don't know. But that's what, if you guys have rectal itch, that's your problem. You got to get baby wipes. And after I take a dump, I only use one slab of toilet paper. And then I stand up with my baby wipes and I wipe the whole area until I'm remnant free. It's clean as a whistle. Don't even need a shower afterwards. I used to take a dump and I have to take a shower. It's like a whole mess. <laughs> you could never get really squeaky clean back there. But with those baby wipes, they are fantastic. Even if, and I tug on the hairs. First, I take one wipe, and I do a complete swiping of the area. <laughs> the second baby wipe, I poke. I, oh. I stick my finger all the way up my ass and to make sure there's nothing in there. If I see a brown dot, that means i got to go back in. Sometimes I get a brown dot 
four or five times after four or five baby wipes. I try to only use three, but if I get on the brown, if I get the brown, that's called the brown dot test. <laughs> and you actually have poked until it's all clear. Absolutely. <laughs> I poke, I poke, and I poke, and I poke. And sometimes I fold, I can fold my baby wipes so that I only use three, so the poking goes on with one baby wipe. Oh, jeez. So you see four or five dots on the baby wipe. And then the last baby wipe, the third one, that's for cleaning all the hairs that are attached to my, my butthole. I tug on the hairs with the baby wipe. I tug and tug and tug until there's nothing on there because the hairs collect. I've got these long black hairs that stick out of my ass, <laughs> and I tug on them with the baby wipes. And I tug and I tug and I tug until I see no brown. And then I'm done, fresh as, fresh as a daisy. I can even go have sex with Beth, and she'll have no odor. She'll see, see her, she'll smell nothing. You know? But if you have a dot on there, that means you're going to get rectal itch. Because if there's any stuff in there, it's going to itch the hell out of you. So that's my secret. And I'm happy to share it with you. And believe me, that's the best advice you'll ever get. Forget about reading books. Forget about studying math. Forget about anything. That's the best advice in life. Because when you're walking around with rectal itch, boy, there's nothing worse than that. And then you start poking through your underwear. I know what you guys are up to. You're pushing with your underwear, right, into your asshole because it itches so bad. And then you end up with stains all over your underpants. I haven't had a stain in my underpants in years. So you can make fun of my, uh, you can make fun of my use of uh, baby wipes. But boy, oh, boy, I tell you what, I smell good and I have no remnants. And that's for women, too, Robin. You don't have to be ashamed. I don't have uh, any problem. Well, how do you wipe? I use toilet paper. And that's enough? Yeah. I don't believe it. <laughs> I guarantee if I was to smell back there, there'd be something. Come smell. Do me a favor. <laughs> blindfold me. Blindfold me now. Because <laughs> you don't want me looking at your naked ass. And I'll smell. I'll tell you, I could blindfold all of you right now. If I bent over and cracked a smile, you wouldn't smell anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'd smell some ball smell, but that's it. It's weird. Boy, I wish I knew about this when I was younger. Would have saved you a lot of difficulties. Believe me, I wish I could tell my kids about all this. But, you know, girls get embarrassed when, you, you know, when your father sits down and starts lecturing you about wiping. So I won't do it. But I would love to teach them about this because I feel it's what I know. And you're supposed to tell your kids and save them this a lot. This is of... what you have to pass on. Yeah, I, honestly, that's it. <laughs> I don't really have much else. I mean, unless they want to learn how to do radio. I guess I could <laughs> teach them that. But to me, I think that's like a God-given talent. You know, I don't know how much teaching you can do. But uh, I'm telling you. What I know about wiping could fill a book. You have rectal itch, huh? Ah, once in a while. Well, so what do you do? You poke at it? No. What do you do to get rid of it? You know, it just goes away. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't go away on its own. Sometimes it's so bad. What do you do? What do you think the rectal itch is caused by? Don't you have to clean up? Yeah, it means you've well, left some remnants in there. This is obviously one of the reasons why we did a Howard 100 News special four years ago, so that Americans could learn well, great you things learn? about this. We, we had a doctor on, Dr. And what did he Neil say? Schwartz, and he, uh, well, it's been four years, but uh, he basically, uh, I think he talked about having exams. Exams, you know, to see if uh, what was going on up there. Yeah, well, that's what happens. You develop hemorrhoids from all right. that. Like Robin right. says, she wipes with paper. I don't see how paper gets you clean. You still have remnants. I. Do you if dab it? I have a situation, I will get in the shower. Well, let's say you're here at work. You I think, don't do it here at work. Well, let, okay. Let's say you're somewhere where there's no shower available, or you don't have the time to shower. You walk around with rectal itch. No. But there's a little stinky. Uh, uh, a, no, no, no. A little no, stinky no, back no, there. No, no. 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 And you just use Usually dry paper. paper does the trick. Wow. I can't even believe what you're saying. <laughs> and you don't have hemorrhoids? You know, dogs don't use... Uh... No, I know, but <laughs> you're not a dog. You get a dog scoot on the carpet. Right. Not you... nec no, they don't. My dog I got to wipe sometimes. Well, your dog yeah. probably, I don't know, can't, can't... I don't know. Do what... Right, they can't lick. Yeah. You don't even wet the paper down? No. Wow. Impressive. Impressive. That first piece of dry paper, though, must be filled with everything. <laughs> I mean, that's a major piece of paper. Did you ever have the paper? Well, what does you your have... wet wipe look like? Oh, my God. It looks like a Rorschach <laughs> test. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a picture of Jesus. 
<laughs> what are you kidding? What does it look like? It's a mess. The second one isn't so bad. It's just polka dots. It's very nice, actually. Wow. You mean you sometimes wipe, when you're in a relationship with a guy, do you have a wipe with paper and then get into bed and then share your bed with a guy and, and make no, love to No, I would shower before that. <laughs> that would be crazy. I'm right at home. There's a shower yeah, I don't right know. There. Wow. I wonder what happens. <laughs> I'm telling you what happens. Anything else, Steve? 7 p.m. tonight on Howard 101, the fast food show. Then at midnight, Greg Fitzsimmons. Stern News, 877-H100-TIP or email. Howard100News at SiriusXM.com. Thank you. Yeah, Greg Fitzsimmons sent me a letter, an email over the weekend. I didn't even realize I gave him my email. <laughs> but uh, he You was and like, Greg have a closer relationship than you know. I know. Well, he was like, gee, I'm, I'm really afraid I've offended you. I haven't heard back from you about my the... The book? The, the, the forward to my book. Because, you know, oh, I went on the air and went ballistic. The guy yeah. asked me to write a forward. I said, Jesus Christ, I have a heart. I don't want to write the forward to your book. So I, I wrote him back. I go, Greg, I didn't know I was supposed to write you back. I'm happy to do it. Meanwhile, I'm not. I don't want to write the forward to his book. But I, I don't want him to feel bad. But the truth is I don't want to write the forward to his book. And then he writes, I know you don't want to write the forward, but you know how much it would mean to me. You're like my hero, everything you've done for me, and, and there's nobody in this world I'd want to write the forward to my book more than you. And I'm like, you got to fucking be kidding me. You know, I've said on the air 50 times I don't want to write the forward so to your book. Asking. Oh, he wants it. All right. Wow, he's So I'm insistent. doing it. I'm doing it, but I don't even know why I'm doing it. i got to put an end to this. See, I had a weird moment. One more fucking person asked me for a quote for their book or the forward to their book. I mean, what is with these books? What do you need me for? He emailed me last week, and he's like, hey, I sent Howard a note, and, you know, he didn't respond, and, you know, I don't know what to do next. You want to know something? I'm going to write the goddamn forward to his book. I just can't motivate myself to do it. But what? what now he's going to have to wait for it. He's going to have to wait. Might he, be a year. Here's what I thought. That Here's what I yeah. would have wanted to write back. But I don't. sometimes I don't feel it's my place to say things. Yeah. I, I wanted to write back, listen, if he didn't hit you back, it means he probably doesn't want to do it. You probably should just leave him alone. Right. But I don't know that that's right coming from nah, me because I'm answering for you. I'm going to write it. I just got to get, you know, I told you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a fill in right. the blanks and you Wait can use it too. Can't we call Greg? No. Come on, let's talk to him he sort of and did. ask. I kind of did it. When? He on knows I don't want to yeah. write it. I told him I don't want to and write it. And what did he say to that? He wrote me a note because, you know, I, were you really angry? Do you, oh, you know, you know. he does that. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's just not going to take a hint. No. He's a hardhead. I don't think he's a hardhead, but there are people like that that as long as you don't say an outright no, right. they just can keep pushing. I should have just said no, Greg. I really don't want to write it. But. Because I would, if, I, if it were me... And I wrote you twice, and you didn't write me back. I would say I'm clearly, in my mind, I would think I'm imposing. I'm going to let it ride. Yeah, well, I'm just going to do it, and I'm going to do my fill in the blanks idea. It's going to be like the <laughs> blank is a really blank <laughs> the guy. Mad libs thing. It's going to be Mad Libs, and now and you can use it too, Gary, and anybody else who wants a forward to their book and use it once I'm done. He can have it. He can have it. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to write. I'm sick of people asking me for the only reason they ask. First of all, the only reason Greg Harley knows me. The only reason he asks me because they think it's going to help him sell books. Right. Of course. They can say forward by Howard Stern. And, you know, some of my fans will buy it just because my forward is in there. That's an ad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I don't see anybody else writing a forward to anybody's book. Only me. I'm a sucker. And I should have just said, no, you're right. But I didn't. And believe me, I do enough for Greg. He worked for Ellen DeGeneres. She probably knows him better. Right. She, she sat in writing call meetings with him. Her, her? Yeah, call Ellen DeGeneres. She's got nothing to do all day. <laughs> She's finished with that American Idol. I mean, how many hours a day can she lick Portia de Rossi? She could take 10 minutes off and fucking that write something. That would be Portia DeGeneres. Mm. Isn't that what she uh -oh. did now? She changed oh, her name. Oh, is she Portia DeGeneres? <laughs> is that right? She went from a de Rossi to a de Generis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's some new name she yeah. gave herself. Sarah Silverman wrote her own forward. God bless her. I love that idea. Well, anyway, I'm going to do it because I told Greg I'd do it, but I don't know when I'm going to do it. Every weekend comes by, I, was, I had it written in my book, write Greg's forward, and I didn't do it. Because you know what? It means me taking three or four hours of my time off and writing. I don't want to take three or four hours of my time off and write. I don't. It's my time off. It's so precious to me. There's so many things I want to do. I love playing chess. 
All of a sudden I go, well, oh, gee, I'll skip my chess game and write Greg's forward? I don't want to. I like Greg. He's a nice guy and everything, but I don't even know him that well. I don't know. I think I've done enough for him. Gave him a show on Howard 100. I don't, I, and I'm happy to do it if, if I could just sort of free some time up. But I'm telling you, like, I'm going to go home this afternoon, and I'm not going to want to write Greg's forward. I'm going to want to watch TV, you know? I just got to sit down and do it. But, you know, I put a lot of thought into stuff I do. If it's going to appear somewhere, it's going to be more than an hour of my time. Oh. Oh. Let's face it. I really don't want to do it. But I wrote Greg back. I go, Greg, it's all fine. I told you I'll write it. When do you need it? I don't even know when he needs it. He probably needs it right tomorrow. I agree that it should be within the time frame that you figure, you I know. Can't, I can't get it together to write it. I'm being then honest. he should wait. If it's that important to him, he'll <laughs> just sit around and well, wait. Well, that's not nice. It's not nice to hound you. But you know what the thing is? I, I sit down and I go, I can do anything I want in the world right now or write Greg's forward. <laughs> and I, I don't know. Greg's forward is nowhere <laughs> near. the top of the list. That's what happens to me. <laughs> Uh, Saturday, I'm sitting at home, and I went, oh. It was like I woke up, I took a nap. It was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I said, hmm, I got that movie Evil Dead Apocalypse sitting there. I can watch that, or I could write Greg's forward. <laughs> and I chose watching Evil Dead Apocalypse. Then, after I was done with that, I said, hmm, I could go downstairs and drink before dinner or write Greg's forward. I chose to go downstairs and drink. And then Sunday I woke up and I said, hmm, I could play a chess game and take a chess lesson or I could write Greg's forward. And guess what I chose? Greg's forward? No, wrong. <laughs> I, chose, I chose to play chess because what I like, that's what I like to do. And then I took a shower. The only people who want to write a forward to a book are prisoners. Yeah, Bernie that would be Madoff. A great forward. Get, get, yeah, get, get Bernie Madoff. Mark David Chapman. Or right. Somebody. People in prison will write all day. Because they're Hinkley would be a great forward. Yeah, because they're losers. <laughs> forward by David Hinkley. I don't know. There's not. I'm just not real motivated to write it. I don't know what to do. I don't know quite what to do. What to do about it? <laughs> Last night I'm getting ready. You know, for the next day. And I had a pile of mail on my desk. I said I could either open up the mail and be completely organized and pay my bills or write Greg's forward. Guess what I chose to do? <laughs> I paid my bills, and guess what? I feel good. I went through all my envelopes and opened them with Robin's uh, opener that she got me. Well, I'm glad you're using Love that. The Excalibur. <laughs> you know, I just can't seem to find the time. I'm being honest. I wish I could give you something that would make it fun to write Greg's forward. You know? I don't know. If I have a free minute, it's just sort of like not into Greg's forward. I want to read a magazine. I want to do something. When am I ever going to write this thing? I don't want to be a prick, but when am I going to write it? If everything I want to do is more important to me than Greg's forward. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know Greg. Ask me 10 questions about Greg. I, I don't know them. I know Who's his, he married to? I have no idea what his wife's name is. <laughs> okay. I'm being honest. Do you I, know? How many children does he have? I think two. I don't know. I, I don't even know. The question. You're the one who's supposed uh, to know right. him. Here, well, here's You're the answer. Writing the forward. Right. I don't know his wife's name. <laughs> I don't know his kid's name. Right. Go what ahead. does he do most of the day? What does he do for a living? How what? does he work? He's a writer, a comedy writer and stand-up comedian, I guess. But what's his process? What's his greatest oh, joke? Are what's you kidding? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> what is his what is the mainstay of his comedy? What does he talk about? His life? Uh, you're guessing. I mean, I saw him on stage once. He was very funny. Uh, but okay, I don't remember. that's partly what you can say. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> what is he talking? Where is his motivation? What what fuels his comedy? Uh, I don't know, money. He wants to make a living? I don't know. I don't know anything about this guy. I don't what know is how many. The gist of his comedy. I don't know. Is it relationship comedy? I don't know is his wife's name, and I've dad met his wife. Comedy like uh, Bill no. Cosby? What no, is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know? No. No. Is it from his childhood? Is it about his psychological no. angst? No. 
I don't know. <laughs> Ask well, me any question about Greg Fitzsimmons write? and I won't be able to answer it. What are you going to write then? I know his dad was in radio. I know his dad was a legend. Um, Bob Fitzsimmons. Yeah. And that, that's all I know. I know that Greg doesn't drink. I know he's... Uh, he's well, he's had some problems and he's right. on medication, I think. Right. And he has an aggression... Right. Situation. I know, know he that. washed his kids out, his mouth out with soap. Which but I, he's I, also gotten into a lot of fights, right? Yeah. Yeah, he fights a lot, but no one can believe it. Because <laughs> he's so little. Because he's a little guy. But well, all right, listen, little guys sometimes are very angry. And I love the guy. I love when he comes in here. He's a terrific performer and he's a very a good funny guest. guy. But I don't really know Greg all that well. Have there been any times that it, you know you remember particularly? Uh, Greg being a part of the show. No. <laughs> I don't. Do you, Fred? No. 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 <laughs> Does anybody? <laughs> I like him. He's funny. And he's a, he's, he's, a, he's a nice guy. But well, what am I going to write about this guy? You know. I'm going to write. I don't know Greg's wife's name. Greg is pushy. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know he has a lot of opinions, which is good. Well, that's it. Do you have any unusual eating habits like John Hahn? Yeah, I eat feces, but uh, uh, no. Do I have? A, yeah, I do. I guess uh, um, I tend, I lean towards veganism um, because I think it's wrong to uh, eat animals, and uh, I think it's feel healthier, cleaner, and I feel superior. Doing that. Yeah. Thanks, man. And I can't. I, I don't. I really like. I really question people. Like, I mean, I don't question. I'm really like. I wonder if like, because John seems like such a thoughtful guy, and does he give any thought to that? He's like, you know, I mean, I used to eat animals. And it still smells good to me when I smell hamburgers. Yeah. But the fact that he's like, you know, killing a cow or, or whatever he's killing when he eats, I wonder if he thinks about that at all. Wait, so you think, like, nice people don't eat meat? I would think, no, 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 I would think they would at least, it would give them some pause, and they would think about it and wonder about it and everything. So I'm, I'm, I, would, I, would, I would ask him about that. I don't really eat feces, I was kidding. About that. <laughs> JD, you're a fast food connoisseur like uh, John Hine, right? Uh, I guess, I mean, I eat uh, fast food places, yes. Are, are you picky like him at all? Um, I don't know, but I, I, I get, can eat a few things. I eat a Burger King. I don't mind Burger King. What do you think is with, with him and being so picky? Yeah, you, you know, John Hines a friend, and, um, you know, his camera's on. Chris, is, you know, means it's on director, means it'll get back to him, and, uh, you know. Just be honest. I don't want to be on John Hines' bad side. That's a bad side to be on. So, uh. Uh, what was the question? What do you think of him being... I think similar? he's fine. I think he's perfectly normal. <laughs> Maybe a little crazy. Uh, Have you ever been out with him? And uh, him being so picky is like ruined plans? Or? I mean, I, I, I've seen... He, he's very specific with his order at Wendy's. And, uh, you know, he's just very specific. He knows what he wants. And he, he, likes, gets, and he gets it. He likes what he likes. He likes what he likes. Hey. Exactly. Jason, do you have any unusual eating habits like John Hahn? Uh, what things? No, I have, things I'm the opposite of either. what John has. I, I will not. I will eat anything. I will uh, put it in front of me. I mean, obviously there are things I like uh, more than other things. But I'm trying to think of just like one normal food. I don't. I'm not big on soup like John. Like John doesn't eat soup at all. I'm not big on soup. Although I do like cream soups, like cream with mushroom. So uh, uh, or, or uh, New England clam chowder or gazpacho. I guess I do like soups. Uh, I'm trying to think what I don't like. I mean, besides like obvious stuff like liver or something like really gross. Nah, I say put it in front of me and I'll eat it. Uh, I have preferences. Obviously, stuff I like more than other things. But uh, and we'll talk about this on Fast Food Show, or depending on when you're watching this, we already talked about this on the Fast Food Show, uh, where uh, uh, I don't even think John's opinion should count because half the fun of different fast food places are the condiments and stuff they put on the burger. You know, does it come with pickles and lettuce? Does it come with their special sauce? Does it come with mayo or spicy mayo? And he's just missing the whole experience. I mean, it's just bullshit if you ask me. He's eating bread and meat. Um, not even cheese. So, you know, it's bullshit. Will, are you a picky eater like John Hine? 
Uh, no, absolutely not. I'm pretty open to eating things. I don't like fish really, but that's about it. Um, I think he's a big baby. Uh, he always gets his way because he refuses to eat anything but burgers or fries. Um, it's kind of gross, actually. Have you experienced like going out with them and running into an issue like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple months ago, we went to a restaurant. Uh, we were planning to go to this nice Italian restaurant. It was Gary, Jason, myself, and John. And uh, John refused to go, so of course we had to go to the bar and get uh, burgers and fries um, because he refuses to eat pasta or, I don't know, Italian restaurant? I mean, you can't eat at an Italian restaurant. That's pretty sad, right? Does John Hine look like a, a picky eater to you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he looks like he picks everything up and eats it. That's picky eater with John Hine. Picky eater. Give me a break. He's never doesn't like pasta? Had spaghetti and meatballs only one time? He's a weirdo. He's a weirdo. And you drive home with this guy? Yeah. It's pretty bad. I mean, I just, I don't know. I mean, John Hine shouldn't be doing a fast food show. He should be doing a show like on nutrition, how to lose weight, you know, or do, doing a show about people shaped like bowling pins. I think there's only like 15 people in the world that have bodies like John Hine. That's a good show. Picking up hamburgers and eating them. I mean, give me a, what are they gonna do a show about next week? Shoelaces and belt buckles? It's just, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Are you picky about food? Nah, I'll eat, I'll eat just about anything. I don't like crazy shit. Like my dad eats like goat's heads. <laughs> he used to uh, pick snails right off the rocks and eat them mm. in, in in Italy. Hit my dad will eat anything. Anything tripe, it's just disgusting. You ever have tripe? No. Tripe is like meat in the form of a fart with modern. It's a fart in the form of meat with marinara sauce. It's horrible, awful. <laughs> if you like, took a piece of meat in a pot, took a piss in it, and then like <laughs> took a six-hour job, took off your underwear, and, and ringed it out into the pot, that would taste better than tripe. Horrible, horrible stuff. We should get John Hine to eat some tripe tonight on the show. That would be an interesting show. Getting a fatso to eat a burger to see what's better than the other, it's, 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 it's a weak premise. Get some tripe in there, get some goat's heads in there, get some snails in there. Then we'll, then we'll, talk, then, then we'll see what a picky eater is. Not that shit. John, so uh, you surprised everyone with telling them what and what you, what you, hold on. <laughs> John, so you, su you surprised everyone with telling them what you will and will not eat. What's, what's with that, man? I've got extremely immature, weird food eating habits. I always have. And you would think I'd be like as skinny as Will Murray, but I'm not, you know, because the stuff I like isn't very good for you. But yeah, I've got, like everybody else has their quirks around here. It took them four and a half years to figure out what one of mine is. Do so you ever run into a problem with any of the guys here where you guys go out for uh, dinner and uh, plans have to change because of you? I, I'm not that bad, but if we'll go to a place that I don't like, I'll, depending on how well I know who I'm with, I'll bitch a little bit or I'll try to find something that I can eat. Look, I could always go with bread and water, and I've done that before. But uh, I'm very narrow-minded when it comes to that stuff and not very willing to try things. This is evidenced by my hatred of soup and pasta and a lot of common things that people like to eat. All right, John, enjoy those burgers tonight. Yeah, now that... That's right up my alley, as you can tell. Wendy. Hello? What can we do for you today, Wendy? Why are you on um, the phone? I have a problem, Howard. I'm in a bad situation. Does it got to do with money? Or does it have to do with wiping your ass the wrong way? Um, I just I just got a puppy, right? I oh, God. You got a puppy? <laughs> yes. Somebody oh, go God. rescue that puppy. I need to get me shoes. I need to get me some socks, and I need to get me some underwears because my puppy shoot up my underwears, and I want <laughs> three pairs of underwear left. And I really need to get me some underwear. Who got you a dog? <laughs> shame on them. My sister. Oh, shame on her. Shame on her. She, you know, you're not capable of taking care of a dog. I know, but it was my Christmas present. And now you don't have any mm. underwear. Underwears. No. <laughs> And I need to replace two bowling balls that got broken at the bowling alley, and I have Do you really need underwear? Yes. <laughs> Why? You know you love your more vagina. More than most. More you than love, most. You know love, you love getting air because, on your vagina. Because I need underwears to wear when I'm in public, so that way, uh, and when I'm on my period, I have my pad <laughs> on my underwear. Oh. oh. And also, sometimes you occasionally have an accident and shit your pants, right? Ooh. Yes. 
Right, so at least the panties catch your uh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is your sister retarded? Uh, no, just me. But who would, uh, you'd have to be retarded to give <laughs> to Wendy get a dog. To give Wendy a dog. It's crazy. So you need panties, not because you like wearing panties, it's just to catch all the periods and duty. Yeah. Right. But she needs the panties because the dog has chewed them up. Yeah. Oh, so what happens when you put your underwear now? Your your uh, pads for your period fall through the hole that the dog chewed in there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Basically, she wears panties to keep the floor clean. Right. You know. Why not just wear a garbage bag? <laughs> Big plastic garbage bag. Just be in the garbage bag. Yeah. yeah. Hey, when you wipe, do you just use regular toilet paper? I use regular toilet paper. Sometimes when I'm out of toilet paper, I use baby wipes. And if I'm out of baby wipes, sometimes I use my socks or my dirty underwear. Socks or dirty underwear. Right. Okay. Do you ever use paper and then poke a hole through the paper and then get your finger full of duty? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> oh, dear. Have you ever used your toothbrush to wipe back there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, have? Stop it. Yeah. You didn't do that, did you, Wendy? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can believe it. You know, that's not good. I know it's not good, but I have to use something. Right. Oh, by the way, you know you're supposed to brush your dog's teeth. That's what I've been doing. What? She has my doing. dog's teeth. Oh, stop. What's your dog's name? My dog's name is Princess Jasmine. Oh, and that's sweet. What kind of dog is it? It's a, it's a, it's a black straight retriever. Okay. All right. Well, I got.